Hello, hello. Uh, my name is Colleen Magnus, and this is my Facebook Live that I do at noon every Wednesday Eastern Time. And normally I have the camera facing down, but today I was so excited, I just had to share with you that we had snow. We had snow in Chesapeake, Virginia, and I am so excited. Uh, typically, we're right on the line, we always get water, you know, just rain, raining down. Uh, but last weekend, we woke up to like five or six inches of snow, and I was so excited. It was a weekend, didn't have to go anywhere. I have two of my grandbabies that live here with me, so I have Tyler Joe and Everett. Everett is a year old. He saw snow for the first time. So we had a blast. Uh, we went out, we built little Olaf, them, a big snowman, built an igloo. Uh, we had snow cream. Isn't that terrible? It's the first time I've ever made snow cream. It's really pretty good. And back in the day when my son Daniel, who was 35, when he was young, like he was maybe a year old, he actually, Danny went out in the garage because we had snow. He built the cutest little wooden snow sled and we have pictures of him in it. So we have pictures of Daniel being in the sled. Then along came Tyler four and a half years later. We have pictures of Tyler in the sled with Daniel. So you know I had to get that sled out again. We have pictures from two years ago of Tyler Joe in the sled. Now Everett in the sled and we even went and saw Mary Jane. So the last grandbaby to get their picture in a snowy sled will be Marley. Now she's only two months old. So hopefully it'll snow here again in about two months. But it was fun. It was fun. So I can't wish for too much snow because I might lose some friends because not everybody likes the snow here, but it's supposed to snow again this weekend. Woo! So now we're talking like two to four inches and hopefully we will see it this time because last time it snowed through the night and it was so fine you couldn't. So I want to see the beauty of the snow and then I'll be good. Then I think I'll be good. So let me see who has come on. I've got my camera. I'll turn it around. We have a fun, fun card we're going to make today. But Donna said she just got ice. Well, that's no fun, Donna. Ice is never any fun. Um, Barb is here. Yes, we are supposed to get snow again this weekend. Um, uh, Donna, so Julie, thank you all for watching. And um, I'm sure others will come on. But you are here to create, not to hear about my snow stories. So I am going to turn this down. And I just want to say, though, after we played in the snow most of the day Saturday, I came upstairs and was in the stamp room the rest of the weekend. That was so much fun. So if you're not a fan of the snow and playing in it, or if you have a free weekend, lock yourself in the stamp room and create. We have such awesome products. And again, it was a joy to do it. And I'll do it again this weekend. So hold on. I am going to turn the camera down and we're going to get creating. Okay. So let me do my stand. All right, let me make sure I'm rotated right. It's gonna, that's always the trick. Because if not, you'll see me sideways and that's no fun. No fun at all, but when it comes to technology, these things definitely happen. So today what I am going to do, we are going to create a spanner card today. Now, if you have never made a spanner card, it looks very complicated. And it is not, it is not hard at all. In fact, it's really, really easy. So again, I'll just introduce myself. My name is Colleen Magnus. You are creating with Colleen today. And I am an independent Snippin' Up demonstrator. So I was going to show you this card. I actually did this card for a swap with my team. But I have, y'all know I've been wearing out this windmill. So I did and I came up with a second card. But what a spanner card is, it's kind of like a three-fold card it reminds you of. And it looks difficult, but it is not. So you have this piece here. So there's your windmill. So you open it up, then you open it up again, and that is your card. Easy peasy once you know how. I had a teacher who once told me that, and I totally agree. You know, even chemistry is easy once you know how. Um, thankfully, I never really attempted it. So this card shows you with... Um, the flowering fields, designer paper, the windmill, but it is celebration time. So for celebration, it's only for two months, but when you place a minimum $50 order, you earn free product from Stampin' Up. Now that's gonna end the end of February, so don't delay if you haven't taken advantage of it yet. But this is a card I'm gonna create for you today. 
So you have this little driving by just to say hi, then you open it up, and then that's your inside. So a lot of fun, a lot of moving parts. Uh, so I'm gonna tell you some of the products I used first, and then I will give you all the measurements. And I will take the measurements, take a picture of them. I can post them on my Facebook page, and I have gotten back to blogging. So um, again, creatingwithcolleen.com, you can see the information there too. Now what I'm using, again, it's Celebration. So this is our Celebration catalog. And it's only good through February 28th. But every time you place a minimum $50 order, you get to choose a product from here. So you have stamp sets. This is the designer paper I'm using today. This is called Daffodil Afternoon. It is a 12 by 12 designer paper. And it coordinates with the Daffodil Bundle in the new mini catalog. But even the paper itself is gorgeous to have. Then you have Catching Butterflies. The stamp set I'm using is called Driving By. And it is an adorable little set with little cards. You've got style, aw, thanks, and driving by just to say hi. So this was a fun set to create with. I always loved coloring as a little kid, and um, I don't do it as much because normally if I'm doing a class or a workshop, I want it to flow quickly, um, and I don't know why because coloring is so much fun. So I'm gonna use my blends to color that. The other products that I used, we have, it's really nice, it's called Tasteful Labels. These are dies, and there are all different labels that you could put your words in. So they come in very handy. You can put a larger saying, smaller, all different shapes too. I love that they're different shapes, and I also love the fact that they are stitched. Stampin' Up! is doing that with a lot of their dies, and I just think it adds so much to the cut piece. It's just not a flat cut piece. Now the other dies that I had to get, it's called Scalloped Contours. So Scalloped Contours goes with a bundle. It's on page 98, so if you get the stamp set and the dies together, you're gonna to save 10%. But this is really, really nice. But not only do you have, it'll cut these flowers and these pieces here, it has a lot of other great pieces inside. I mean, look at this. Oh, I bought it just for this. Um, these will cut your flowers. You have this awesome border that is stitched, but then you have these dies. Now I have seen, they use great tape in here too. I have seen this die, which is really cool, and I've even seen them lace ribbon in between it. But the die that I'm using today is going to be the second one because I wanted this scallop edge. And again, it is stitched. So those are in the annual catalog, and they, of course, will be available for a couple more months, through the end of April, I believe it is. So with the spanner card, I am gonna give you some dimensions. And again, I will post them where you can visually see them, because um, I did a lot of different layering. Like this was probably more detailed than I would do, whereas here, it was just a strip of designer paper like that. So to have the base of your spanner card, and I'll show you how to cut it. For this card, you are gonna need a five and a half by eight and a half sheet of Flirty Flamingo, and I scored it at four and a quarter, so I'll be folding that. Then you're gonna need four pieces that are seven eighths by four inches, and this is from that Daffodil Afternoon Celebration paper. So I will have two of them on the front here, and then the other two will go on the inside. So I'll just set that aside there. You're gonna need a scrap piece of white paper just to go ahead and stamp your cars on so you can cut it out. Here are the other two of the Daffodil Afternoon Strips, and then this is that three and a quarter by four inch basic white, which is gonna go on the very inside. Now for this piece, and I'll be talking about this as we go, um, this piece here, this driving by, I am actually using designer paper from a set that's in the annual catalog, and this is called Bloom Where You Are Planted. So this is also a wonderful bundle. It has a macrame holder, different plants you can cut out, but in there, they have this awesome brick designer paper. And that's what I used for the back. So for this brick designer paper, 
It is three and three eighths by four inches. Again, the paper is bloom where you are planted. You are going to use from the tasteful label dies, this little stitched piece here. And then you're gonna need a piece of the, just a scrap of flirty flamingo um, paper. Does not matter how long it is, I'll show you why. But you do want it a little less than say maybe one and a half inches. One and a half inches or just slightly less because that's what we're gonna label this piece on. Now, this bottom piece right here. That's where all my little moving parts are, but it's still fine. What I have for that, let me scoot these over. I have, for this piece right here, I've got a five and a half by one inch piece of Flirty Flamingo. I have a five and three eighths by three quarter inch of this daffodil afternoon paper. As you could see, normally these increments would be like um, by quarter inch, but I just wanted the finest edge to trim these out. That's why we're dealing in one eighths. So don't let it scare you. It's really doable. It's just one eighth under a quarter. So I have these pieces here. Then I cut from the granny apple green, the uh, scalloped contour dies. This is that whole piece. So this is gonna make up my little greenery in the background, but it's not long enough. So that's why I need both sides. So when I go to cut them, I just cut them about an inch thick. So I cut the top and the bottom, and these would be the pieces that I'll be using. And then in the designer paper, the daffodil designer paper, they actually have, let me show you the whole sheet. One of the patterns on the designer paper is this. When I saw it, I thought, that could be like the road. That could be the road and my little markers in the middle. So you're just going to trim. There's no measurement, but just trim this to where you've just cut in between these, um, you know, these patterns to get something that looks like this. And I just did the whole piece because I'm going to use it in two places. So all that said, I'm sure your mind is swimming and you're like, what? So let me get started and show you. Hey, Kay, I'm glad you could come on. And Miss Doris is here, Tracy. Oh, good, Tracy's sneaking from her office. Good, so she can watch. I won't tell anybody, Tracy. <laughs> so, let's get started. As I said, let me find my parts here. I've got so many parts. Okay, for the spanner card, all it is is your five and a half by eight and a half inch, scored at four and a quarter. So you will crease that, and then you're gonna take your Stampin' Up cutter, and all we are gonna do is cut one inch on each side. So what I'll do is I will pull this up. I'm gonna use the one inch mark here, because that's easier for me. So I have one inch there, and when I go to cut it, I'm just gonna cut to that score line. Pick it up, make sure I'm there. So I've just cut that one inch, then I can flip it over and do the same here. So that really is gonna be this part. Now the reason they call it a spanner card because you just have something that spans across those two pieces. That, my friend, makes a spanner card. And then however you wanna decorate it from here, because that'll open with that, that is up to you. So I'm gonna take this piece, I'm gonna take two of those seven eighths by four inch pieces of designer paper. I think I might use a little bit of liquid glue. When I have a edge that close, I really like to kind of be able to move it around a little bit just in case I'm not exactly where I want to be. Can't always do that with our um, stamp and seal because that is just awesome. I mean, it's awesome tape, but boy, when it sticks, it really wants to stick. So I've got one piece there, and then I will just put one piece up here. Okay. One piece here. So there's my two parts that I have. I'm gonna to wait to do the bottom part for the last. Now what I'm going to do is I will do this center piece. So for this center piece, that's actually this here. 
I will take my designer paper from the bloom where you are planted and I will put this in the center. And it, incidentally, I meant to say earlier, this card was inspired by a dear friend, Diana Gitz. Diana is just fantastic with colors. She always does a great job with her colors. And she was one who gave me the inspiration by putting all this together. So that's pretty much what you have right there. You've got that part. Now for the driving by, I'm going to, i got all these parts everywhere. I'm gonna take the Tasteful Label dies that's already cut, and I'm going to stamp the driving by just to say hi. And I'm using just black Memento ink. So I will do this in the center, like that. And while I have my ink out, that scrap piece I was telling you about, I'm gonna go ahead and just stamp that little truck right there. So I'll stamp that as a scrap because I'm gonna color that. And I think what I might do too, since it's out, this piece here, the three and a quarter by four for the um, center, I will stamp that too. Now I've never had any problem with coloring with Memento um, and have having to let it dry, but I was watching a video this weekend and they stamped it ahead of time to make sure it's good and dry, so. That got me nervous and I said, oh, I better do the same. So I'll just set this aside. So everything is pretty much stamped that needs to be stamped. Okay. So for this part here, again, I have already stamped driving by. And for the um, scrap piece I told you of like the one and a half inch wide this way, Flirty Flamingo, I am going to take my label I wanted to, I didn't have a die that would frame that. So I just made sure to keep it simple. Let me see. That I wouldn't have to cut the top and bottom because that's already there. So now I can just take my paper snips and just, it's a straight cut along this edge. Just like that, goodness. I am gonna to have to check into new contacts. Hopefully that's close. <laughs> I think it is. But that gave me my layering for my car. And I'm going to wait to put it on because I want to see how high my car is. So when I can't find it, remind me it's right there on the stand of um, my lamp. So basically, we have that. For the inside, we have this kind of put together. For the inside right here, oh, a little smear. I'm going to take those other two strips that I had of the Daffodil Afternoon Paper, and I'm just going to glue them on each side of the base of this card. So I'll put this here. And when I'm doing this, I just kind of make sure the top and the bottom and the side have kind of an equal edge on there. I'm not too worried about what's in the middle. And I will have this here. And I'll check comments in a minute. Oh, Colleen's here. Good morning, Colleen. Here we go. So now that I have the inside, I have this piece. And again, that was three and a quarter by four inch. This is just gonna go in the center. And I'm actually gonna color it with my blends. So with the blends, y'all know there is a fine point and a fatter tip. And you could tell by the lines, skinny and fatter. And so what I'm going to do is I like to um, take the daffodil light. And I'm just going to come in here. And a little fuzzy on there. And I'm going to just color my car. I hope you can see that. I wasn't sure if I was in the picture or not. So that's with the light. Then I will take my dark. And with the dark, I'm just gonna kinda of come in. You just want some shadowing. So I will have the car door kinda of come across here. So I have that. And if you wanna blend that line, I'll hold it up in a minute so you can see it. That's all I've done is that. But if I wanna blend that line in there a little more, I just take the fine tip 
and just kind of scratch right on that edge and it works well. So now I'm going to take the light smoky slate and the small tip and I'm going to do my bumpers and I'll do the outside of my tires. So I love the width of these tips because you can really just go around and it's colored. So that's my light smoky slate. And then this is the dark. So this is really a cute set. Colleen said she loves this set and it really is cute. So now that I have these, I'm just going to color my balloons. And with the balloons, this is my light pumpkin pie. I have a light pool party. Let me make sure. Yep, yep. Here I've got my light pool party. And then since I have that granny apple green on the front, I definitely want to bring it in on my balloons. And they're cute like that, but if, if I want to bring just a little bit of shadowing, because that's kind of where that shadow line is, there's a dark granny apple green, the dark pumpkin pie, and my dark pool party. Cute. <laughs> Sorry, if I say so myself. So I have my little car, and what would a windshield be without some Wink Stella, not to mention the hubcaps. Now you probably won't see this, but it honestly adds a lot. And then that strip that I told you to take for the road, we're gonna use it in two places. We're gonna use it on the front on the banner, and I'm gonna use it here. And I have plenty, take that off. I've got plenty here. So with this piece, I can take it, and I can put it on the bottom. And what I'm gonna do, I have two options here. I could put it on the bottom because I don't want it over my wheels. So if I put it on the bottom where it's even, it might be longer. And if I do, I can just trim that little bit of designer paper off. But I can also put it even on the bottom. And if I wanna show a little bit of dimension, what I'll do is, let me take this. Put, I should have had my craft and rubber mat. Note to self. I can put this on the bottom so I don't have to trim anything. And you can see it's over my tires a little bit, but that's okay because I'll just trim off this edge. No sense in trying to cut that exact. So I'll just trim that little bit. And I can put this in the inside. Like so. And then what I did earlier is I actually, um, I colored another one of the cards and I'm just gonna take some mini dimensionals and put them on the back here. Maybe three sounds good. And then I'm gonna pop this car up so that the wheels are actually over. Let me get that little piece. I got a little piece underneath there. Oh, good gosh. Okay. So now if I want to, I can actually put this on the car and for the inside, it is driving on the road. So for the balloons, I've got something, little black fuzzies or something. I have to get rid of those. Um, so that is my inside. So that part's done. So when I go to close this, let's make the actual spanner part that goes across the bottom. Again, it's five and a half inches, so it is going to span across the bottom like so. That's five and a half by one. And I'm going to take this piece of five and three eighths by three and three quarters. And when I put it on here, again, I'm just going to worry about my thin edge on the sides and on the bottom. I want a little bit of an extra edge up here. So I will put on my liquid glue. I love the green Tombow liquid glue. It's very, very strong. It's nice and tacky but it gives you just a couple seconds to be able to move this around where you want it. Because you all know, being a previous drafter, if it's not where I want it, I will 
probably lose sleep. And I know that's crazy. Don't y'all do that. I'm not trying to teach you that. So I have it where these edges are here. And then I am going to take my road and I'm just gonna butt it up against there. And it's gonna be a little over, but that's okay. So when I do this, instead of putting it on this piece and getting glue everywhere, I am going to just go across the top here, real light. Light hand and stamping is always best. You've heard me say that before. And then I will, which way I want it. I will put this piece on here. God willing, here we go. Okay. So that butts up against there. And I am gonna cut this flush with the flirty flamingo. Oh, Colleen loves that glue too. I do, It's if you want a card to stay together and not go anywhere, you definitely want the Tombow liquid glue. Um, and even, as I said, the Seal Plus is really strong, but at least with the Seal Plus, you have a chance of maybe pulling something off. With this liquid glue, you don't, so you better like where you put it. So I'm building this, so that's gonna go across the bottom. Now, as I said, I took the scalloped contour dies and I cut this scallop out out of Granny Apple Green, but then I just butt this up to like the one inch side. So this is one inches from the scallops to here because all I really want is that scallop. Now, the other thing you will notice is that my scallop is not long enough. That's why I needed two. So on my scallops, I am going to just cut in between like so. And I'm gonna do it on both of them. Let me go this way. I think I have a better chance of starting in the scallop than not. Okay. So on here, I can, I'm gonna put tape on the back of this. Let me see how that is. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to put these two together. And the beauty of it is, once you put your car on here, Wherever you put it, you're not even gonna see that seam. My other one, you couldn't even tell there was a seam. But here, you're really, really not. So what I will do, let me kind of eye this in there because you know I want my scallops right. I'll put my tape on the back, like so. Let's see if you could see that. And then I do wanna see those little, the stitching. I think the stitching is adorable. So I, I'm gonna, Layered here because if I eyed it right, then my scallops will kind of end on the same on each side too. Then I'm going to take my second scallop. Oh my goodness, where did it go? You have to love a live, you know. Here we go. Whew, scared me. So I'm going to take this one and again put it here. So looking from the front. I'm just gonna butt this together. And you really, let me just put it in there. You really can't even tell that there is a seam there. So I'm just gonna take my cutter and trim these sides. Let me, all right, I'll be brave enough to do it with the scissors. So there's one. Yeah, I gotta see what I'm doing here. It's just easier to start on the edge. So there is my piece. Now, one of the things I noticed when I put this together, if I put this on here, when I pulled it up, I saw the back of that. And I thought, eh, that's kind of ugly. I don't want them to see that. So I don't have a cut, but I've got the piece right here. Just take a scrap, maybe a one inch piece by five and a half inch piece of the flirty flamingo. And I'm just gonna put it on the back there. So let me cut that real quick. All right. In fact, I'll do it right here with you. So I'm just gonna, again, up my one inch. That's my one inch. And then five and a half inches. You gotta hide these things. And I'm just gonna just tape this on the back so that at least when they look at this, it's just a nice edge. I can live with that. All right. 
put along the edge. There we go. So that just hides that. So when I flip it over, I will have a much prettier backing than what you saw before. So with this, I am going to put dimensionals here because then it's easier to line this up. And I'm also only going to do one side at a time. So I'll put a dimensional on this arm, two of them actually, because I can. Then two on this side. So I'll pull these off first. And you just want to make sure, since these kind of flap around, make sure that it's just butted up to that side there. And as you know my rule, you never push down till it's exactly where you want it. So I'm going to get both sides first, because you know I'm picky. Okay, so I have this. Then on this side, I'll just take these off. Hold that down there. Make sure it's, it's nice and even. And just put that across. And that is a spanner card. It looks so difficult and it is so stinking easy. So now I told you I wanted to wait to put these pieces on. So I have a car. And again, just to show you, um, I already have a cut out, so you don't have to watch me cut. But I like our blends um, because it is really just a light and a dark. I really don't even see a need for us to have like a middle shade because I just come in here with my light. And if you have a light hand, you can use this brush end. You don't want to apply a lot of pressure with it. So you keep your tips nice and um, hard. Then I'll just come in with some of the darker pool party just to get that shading in there. Look like I was a real artist or something. <laughs> we all know better than that. Okay, down at the bottom. So again, doesn't have to be perfect. You just want some light and darks. Then I will take my light granny apple green and I can come in here for the fenders. Okay, and come in with your dark. Simple, simple. Just a couple little brushes of that over here. Just that little bit of shading is all you need. Then to blend it out, just go back to your light and just pull right on those edges. And that really does just blend it. So my light, smoky slate, around my tires. And then the dark, smoky slate. This way you'll also know the colors that I used um, while you watch me color. Oh, we got a little tailpipe, a little gray thing right there. So for, oh, is this the light? Let me see. Nope, that's the dark. Let me go back to the light, smoky slate, and I'm just gonna do this part here. And then for the windshield, I just didn't wanna leave it stark white. So I actually have the light balmy blue and I took the brush end and I just kind of did like some streaks. I didn't really try to get this whole thing um, covered because then it looks too colory. You know, it's, it's not like a coloring book where we had to stay in the lines. You're an adult now. You can color any way you want. It's so freeing. <laughs> so here, my Wink Estella. Just so everybody knows, this is my glass. And you don't see this. It's so hard to see um, on the camera, you know, when you're doing a video. But it just adds a lot. So that's how I colored my little truck, but by the magic of television. ta -da! I already cut out. So here I'm just going to take two of the small dimensionals. And I love using dimensionals because not only does it give it dimension, but they're very strong. So I can take my little guy and put him on the road. He's driving across country. 
And then I'll just take my driving by to say hi. And I think I'll do big dimensional top and bottom and small on each side. I think four big ones would have been an overkill. But this will give me some good support in the middle and then on the sides. And that's your little saying. Driving by to say hi. So this is a spanner card. Again, lots of fun. Very easy. And then you're inside. So with, again, these products, they are from Celebration. If you would like to place an order, you can go to creatingwithcolleen.com. Shop now button's easy to push, push. And you can also request my newsletter. If you don't have the newsletter, I take these videos and I also send them to you by a newsletter. And you have the different dimensions to go with it. And I will be putting it on my blog. I'm really um, starting the year out right and want to get as much creativity out there as I can. So uh, let me see. Let me check it. So Tracy Carter loves the card. Thanks, Tracy. Again, I owe a lot of it to Diana um, because I loved her colors. She is a, my coloring queen. Um, Doris, you are certainly welcome. And I do appreciate all of you being here. Thank you so much, Colleen. So I will go back. If you ever have any questions when I've made a card, please let me know. Um, I'd be more than happy to answer it. You can always email me, private message me, however you do it. Lord knows there must be seven or eight different ways to contact a person these days. But I will be here next week with another card. Probably be trying to keep showcasing celebration because we have all these amazing sets and designer papers and so little time to share them. So if you'd like to place an order this month, and your order is under $150, please use this host code right here, and I'll be sure to send you a wonderful thank you card. So thank you so much for joining me. It was a lot of fun. I've had a lot of fun with these cards, and we'll see what I come up with um, this weekend after I get done playing in the snow. So God bless you all, and I hope you'll join me again next week. Bye-bye.